From the beautiful Charlotte County Three, Coastal two, Region, the Bay of Fundy, New Brunswick, we're here in St. Stephen, Chocolate Town, Canada, for a lot of chopping, sawing, and axe throwing, right here on Lumberjacks. Lumberjacks is sponsored by Echo, professional quality, ask any pro. Crown, protect, maintain, save. Bodog, be a player. Red Pine Wilderness Lodge, simply unreal fishing. We're here in Canada's Chocolate Town, beautiful St. Stephen, New Brunswick, to kick off our 11th season of Lumberjacks. Hi, I'm Bill Deba, the producer and host of the series. I'm joined by my co-host, Rod Cumberland. Now, Rod, you're a St. Stephen boy. Why is this such a great place for a lumberjack competition? Actually, Bill, St. Stephen is steeped in logging history. A lot of white pine logs sailed down the St. Croix River here behind us, destined for Europe. And just south of the site is an old axe factory. They used to manufacture axes here years ago. Now, every summer, New Brunswick Day, middle of summer, great field of competitors get together for this event. Actually, Bill, we have the best competitors in the Maritimes, best lumberjacks, best lumberjills will be here tomorrow, and they'll be joined by J.P. Mercy and Donna Lambert from Quebec. Now, among the events we're covering is the women's bow saw. There's going to be some big battles there, right? Uh, actually, Kathy Johnson's been uh, just dominating the scene here in the Maritimes, but Janet Walker, she's being trained by J.P. Mercier. It's going to be a battle of the blades tomorrow on the women's bow saw. Well, we had the great opportunity to have Miss Petite New Brunswick do our opening ceremonies for us. The ceremonial cutting of the ribbon on the axe target there, witnessed by the Ganon chocolate mousse in the background. What a great treat. Beautiful day. We've got a great lineup of uh, lumberjacks and lumberjills here today. We're expecting a crowd of over a thousand people to watch the show. Well, we're going to get started with the underhand chop, cutting through 12 inches of aspen. In total, we had a field of 13 men competing in this in this competition. We're getting started with truly is the battle of the ages. We got Nate Cumberland taking on Roger McPhee, and you call him the wily veteran, don't you? Oh yeah, Roger McPhee's been around a long time, member of the Lumberjack Hall of Fame, and here's uh, my young fellow Nate Cumberland, only 14 years old, going to try his hand at the underhand chop. Well, we're going to see if he's going to teach Three, Roger. Two, Roger McPhee, a couple of things here. And of course, the underhand chop, it's all about hitting your mark. That's right. Nate just starting out with this event, of course, learning how to hit his lines, learning how to swing some power. So it's good for him, good practice for him here in the underhand chop. And Roger's hitting his lines, that's for sure. Not as strong as he used to be, but Roger at 30 seconds already in his backside. Nate having a hard time hitting his lines there in the front side. Look at Roger's actually. Only one miss hit there in that block. Getting close to the end here now. As he's tiring out, Roger McPhee sets a time to beat a 42.07 in the first heat of the underhand chop. So of speed, strength, and accuracy, what's the most important? Well, I would say accuracy, then work on the speed and strength after that. Thanks, Roger. You work on the speed and the strength, and uh, we'll see you in a couple of years. Uh, well, we're going the opposite way, I think. But anyway, <laughs> we'll work on it. This next heat featuring Trevor Dillman from Nova Scotia taking on Paul Woodland. Now, Paul's one of the best axemen in all of Canada, Trevor Dillman. Maybe could have been, but he, I know he gets busy with work and doesn't like participate in the sport as much as he'd like to. That's right. Paul Woodland chopped a pile of blocks this year. 2010, he's really going for it this year. Now, a little bit different strategies here. Trevor Dillman, a wide open face. Woodland, a lot narrower here on the front side. Paul likes a narrow face because the chips really fall out a lot quicker for him, he says, in this bigger wood. Seems to be working for him so far in the underhand chop. Into 26, 27 seconds now. Paul Woodland on his backside. Trevor Dillman trying to catch up to him right now. Looks like Paul Woodland's going to win this heat. He lowers the time to beat by five seconds down to a 37.66. You have a bit of a hanger there on the front side. The block it wasn't chipping out for you at all, wasn't it? No, the block was hard and it was quite stringy wood. Here we go with heat number three of the underhand chop right now. The time to beat is Paul Woodland's 37-66 in the last heat. Big mountain of a man, Moyle Conrad, taking on Nick Graham, who scratches his head. Does he know what to do here? Oh, uh, Nick Graham, no problem at all. Big, strong two, man, one, swings really well. Both these guys are good choppers, but Moyle Conrad's oh, yeah. really been struggling Anthony with a hip problem in the last year. And it looks like his log is on a little bit of a slant there, but he's still a strong man. If he's, as long as he's accurate, he's going to be okay. Guys this size that swing and axe that hard can make up for a lot of mistakes in the underhand. Both guys on their backside right now. Moyle Conrad's going to challenge Woodland's time at 37.66 as he's ready to put the final drivers in. Just about there, 38.39 seconds. Not quite fast enough to beat Paul Woodland's time at 37.66. So of all the choppers we've seen so far, though, you got them on the cleanest lines. I mean, you're hitting your mark. Um, one, of the, one of the oldest, too. Right? I mean, that's the secret of the game is accuracy, right? You know that, Bill, too. And, you know, I'd still do all right. 
Here we go down to heat number four. Still the time to beat is 37-66 set by Paul Woodland. Now this is a showcase heat. I'm guessing the winner's going to come out of this heat. Don Lambert taking on Mario Bork. Actually should. J.P. Mercy not showing up for St. Stephen actually left a big hole here. So there's uh, it could be anybody's game in the other hand shot, but we bet definitely have the fastest two guys here in the last heat. Certainly opens the door for Don Lambert as they get started. 12 inches of Aspen. Both guys into the wood at the exact same time. Both guys keeping up a great pace. A couple of knots there for Donald. That's right. Thankfully it's in the middle of the block. He can get around that very easily chop around it. Mario got a good pace here going. Excellent speed by Donald Lambert as well. Mario Bork ready to make his turn over the backside. Mario makes his turn first. Donald right behind him at this point. Donald keeping those short, quick swings in this 12-inch wood. Hopefully it'll pay off for him, but boys, Mario's putting a big hole in the back already as well. Good clean lines there for Donald Lambert. Never not for Donald Lambert as Mario Bork ready to drive things off. Mario wins the underhand shot for a 28.71. Couple of seconds ahead of Lambert. Tell me how important it is to be efficient on your turn. I mean, your footwork is very, very fast and efficient. Well, the faster you can be around, the be you're saving time, right? It's a race of time, so probably the best way is to jump both feet in the air and turn, but I think I made a step there, so I try to be as fast as I can. So it's a combination of footwork as well as preparing your axe for the first shot on the backside. Yeah, you gotta get, you gotta see it as you're turning and hit as soon as you can, because by the time the clock is ticking, so you gotta be fast. Well, there it is, the first event in the books here in St. Stephen, New Brunswick. The underhand chop goes to Mario Bork with a time of 28.71, besting the field by over two seconds.